that in your Bible and then please stand. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. Let me give you a couple of statements. I, uh, whenever I get a new Bible, I always look in the front and the back and find out how many blank pages there are. And then I fill them with quotes and sayings and outlines and all kinds of good stuff. And so I'm going to give you a couple of quotes tonight. If you want to write them in the uninspired pages of your Bible, that'd be great. Uh, <clears throat> the preacher's been... Uh, of course, we've been doing prayer time a lot on Thursday nights, and we want to be what the Lord said his house was supposed to be, a house of prayer, and he's been preaching on it, and so I asked the Lord if he'd give us something tonight, he gave me a message on prayer, but I want to give you just a couple of statements. Number one, if you want to write this down, when you pray, God works. When you pray, God works. That is a guarantee all through the Bible. I have a book uh, called God Hearkened to the Voice of a Man. Uh, I have not read that book, but that title intrigues me. That God would listen to you and to me. God hearkened to the voice of a man. I was thinking about that book yesterday, and uh, all through the Bible when God hearkened to the voice of a man. Abraham almost changed God's mind about destroying Sodom. Really, he did change God's mind. If Lot had only won six people to the Lord, Abraham had changed God's mind. God said, I'd save it for 50. I'd save it for 40. Abraham whittled God down, and God listened to him and said, all the way down to 10, if there's 10, I'll spare it. But Lot didn't do his job as a Christian. Joshua God hearkened to the voice of Joshua in the Old Testament when they were battling the Amalekites, I believe it was, and the sun began to go down and the Israelites began to lose. And Joshua cried out to the Lord and said, God, send the sun back. And the sun that was setting went back and gave them more daylight so that they could defeat the enemy. That's pretty incredible. That's pretty amazing. Moses often prayed God said several times, I'm going to destroy them. That's it. I'm tired. At one point, uh, you parents will understand this. Um, at one point, God said to Moses, Thy people, which thou broughtest out of Egypt. That's what moms and dads will say to each other when they're embarrassed about their kids. Your son did this. Your daughter did this. God said to Moses, Your people. And I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to annihilate them. And Moses said, God, don't do it. That's not like you, Lord. Moses even went so far as to pray, God, spare them and not just take my life, but he basically said, send me to hell and spare them. And God listened. Often God changed his mind. God hearkened to the voice of a man. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. We just saw that verse happen. I still haven't gotten over it. I was talking to somebody today. They asked, do you think Trump is God's will? I said, I think that is a direct answer to that Bible verse. I don't think God did it for America. I think God did it because his people did exactly what he said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And God says, if you do this, I will do this. I will hear and I will answer. God listened to the voices of Christians all across our country just a week ago. I want to preach about prayer tonight. Prayer, when you pray, God works. Let me give you another statement. I've said this one before. Every failure is a prayer failure. Every failure is a prayer failure. Too loud? Humming a little bit? I didn't pray about the mics. That's a good thought. Try it 
try that a little bit. Every failure is a prayer failure. Does that sound any better? How about now? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Is it that buzz? How about now? Every microphone failure is a Frank or JR failure. I'm just kidding. Every failure is a prayer failure. Ephesians chapter 6, let's read the verse and I'll let you sit down. Ephesians chapter 6, this is at the end of the whole armor of God. We're not going to take time to cover that tonight. I just want to hone in on verse number 18. He says this, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. There are five thoughts in that verse. I want to give them to you, and we will be quick tonight because we want to pray. Many people have a prayer time. Very few people have a prayer life. I've got all kinds of statements I could give you tonight. None of them original to me, but good statements. Many people have a prayer time. Very few people have a prayer life. Every failure is a prayer failure. Wherever you're struggling at in your life tonight can be traced back to a struggle in your prayer life or lack of prayer life. Prayer is work, and work takes discipline. And so I want to preach tonight just quickly on five thoughts, the discipline of prayer, the discipline of of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us tonight. Lord, there's a lot to cover in this verse, but we want to get to the time of prayer. Lord, the disciples said, teach us to pray. I believe tonight in my own life, the, the error is not that I don't know how to pray, but that I don't. In Christianity, it's not that we don't have the mechanics down, it's just that we don't pray. And so I pray that tonight you would help us with this idea of the discipline of prayer and then help us to apply it tonight and may we apply it every day to our lives. God, prayer is where the power is at. You've given us the avenue of prayer to get the ear of God. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to use that, help us to apply it to our lives like never before. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My children take karate. Many of you know that. And uh, they work on disciplines. Now, there's a lot of different definitions for discipline. It can be punishment and correction for wrong behavior. But discipline can also be uh, a style of training. My children go through these forms that they have to do, things they do with their hands, specific moves that they make. And there, some call them forms, others they are called disciplines. You have to do this specific discipline, this specific form. There are five disciplines in this verse about prayer. Now, let me just give you quickly a definition of discipline. Discipline, because it means this, to train or to drill. To train or to drill. Discipline is not a spanking. Now, I'm not teaching child rearing tonight, but I'm telling you what discipline is not. Most people think when you correct your child with a spanking, you ground them, they think that's discipline. That is not discipline. Discipline is training. The Bible says in Proverbs, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'd not depart from it. If you've ever trained a dog to sit or to do tricks, how do you do that? You sit there for copious amounts of time. I was talking to the girls today about expanding their vocabulary. Copious amounts of time, if you don't know what that means, look it up later. Large amounts of time. There you go, Jada. Jada's like, I'm not looking it up, I don't really care. <laughs> large, you spend large amounts of time with that dog going sit, and that dog stands there wagging his tail, and what do you do? You put your hand on his hind end, and you push it to the floor. And you say, sit. And he pops back up, and you go, sit. And he pops back up, and you go, sit. You don't beat him every time he stands up. But yet, that's what a lot of people do with their children. There you go. That one is free. I don't mean dis... Never mind. I said I wasn't preaching on that. Discipline, to train or to drill. It is also behavior that is maintained by training 
and control. Prayer is the behavior that we want to maintain. To maintain. Not just occasionally pray, but a consistent prayer ought to be a consistent part of my life. So prayer is the behavior that I want to maintain, and discipline is how we do it. And there are five disciplines, five forms, however you want to call them, or whatever you want to call them tonight, of prayer in this verse. Five aspects of prayer. Now let me say this, if you don't pray, this message isn't going to help you. I said it while I was praying, the disciples asked the Lord, teach us to pray. We, I mean, there are books and books and books and books and books on how to pray. You can find apps on your smartphone that will supposedly help you to pray. They'll set reminders for you on when to pray. Uh, there are, mo- I looked uh, just a few days ago, I was looking at different apps uh, for prayer, and I couldn't believe how many more apps I found for Muslim prayer times than I found uh, for anything Christian or Bible-based. But I'm just saying there's all kinds of things on here. There's a lot of methodology about prayer, but if you don't pray, all that methodology does you no good. All those reminders on your smartphone do you no good. All of those prayer lists do you no good. All of those books and all of that knowledge does you no good if you don't pray. Prayer must be a, in, an integral part of your life. This week, my prayer life has increased. I don't say that arrogantly at all. I, I came to realize this week how much I needed God and realized I'd been living without him. It's easy to do. Get busy doing things for God. You get busy serving, and we just get in a routine. Oh, I was praying, reading my Bible, doing everything I was supposed to do, but just doing it without him. Doing it for him, but doing it without him. And this week I have... God's allowed me another chance to just kind of start over. Thank God for second chances. Thank God for second, 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 second chances. You do the math on that, figure out what that means. Thank God for multiple chances. And so we've started over this week, and I have prayed. My prayer this week has been a lot more... I don't even know what the word... It's been real, if I can say it that way, instead of just routine or habitual. All right, and so let me just give you these things tonight very quickly, because we need to pray. That's what we need to do. So, five disciplines of prayer. Write them down if you want to. Number one in this verse is in the Spirit praying. In the Spirit praying. Look at verse number 18 again. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That phrase literally means to be joined with the Holy Spirit of God. To be joined with the Holy Spirit of God. There are several verses throughout the New Testament that talk about praying in the Spirit. If you want your prayers answered, you must pray in the Spirit of God. But we've got to be joined. There's, there's something different about that being joined with the Spirit of God. To be joined means I'm not only praying uh, according to His will, but I'm praying with Him. Like He's praying and I'm praying and we are praying for the same thing. That's what it's talking about being joined. And so when we pray, there's in the Spirit praying. The Holy Spirit indwells me the day I get saved, and He enables me to pray. We're coming back to Ephesians. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit lives inside every born-again Christian. If you have been saved for any length of time and have spent time praying, you can attest to this fact. There have been times in your life, in your prayer time, when you didn't know what to say. But it just seemed like there was somebody there to help you and to to guide you in your praying. Here it is, Romans chapter 8, verse number 26. Likewise, the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit of God, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
There's times when you don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit knows what. There's times when there's, there's burdens. There's things weighing on your heart. There's things going on in your life. And you go to God, you know you need to pray about it. And you get on your face before God and you say, God, I don't even have the words. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so burdened. I'm so hurt. I'm so pained. I'm so, whatever it might be, whatever that emotion is, and you're, you're before God and you think, I don't even know how to put it into words. You know what that verse means? The Holy Spirit knows what you need. And he goes to God and he says, God, Lisa's on her face right now. She doesn't know what to say, but here's what she needs. Let me intercede on her behalf. Here's exactly what you see. You don't need to know what to say. Some of the sweetest prayer times I've ever had in my life were times when I said nothing. I just got down before God and said, God, I just need you. And boy, the Holy Spirit inside me, his spirit bearing witness with my spirit, he knew what I needed. He lives inside me. He knows what I'm feeling. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what's going on in my life. And so when I go to God and I don't know what to say and I don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit's right there going, I got this. Here's what they need. That's a blessing. That's a tremendous blessing. The Holy Spirit, we, meet, we must pray in the Spirit praying. If we're not walking, I'll get there in a minute. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will impress upon our hearts something specific to pray for. We've all had times in our lives, maybe it's in the middle of the night, you wake up all of a sudden from a dead sleep, and you're thinking about someone else in the church. And you think, man, I need to pray for them. There have been times that's happened to me. There have been times I've prayed for specific people. All this, I mean, I'll be outside mowing the yard, and all of a sudden someone will come to my mind, and I think, I just need to stop and pray. And so I have stopped and prayed for that person, and then sent them a text message. And I'll get a response, you have no idea how badly I needed that at this moment. We don't know. I was reading my Bible a few weeks ago, several weeks ago now, and uh, I, I like to read these names. How do you remember the message Brother Ed preached about Abraham went up on the mountain and came down and you got a bunch of nephews with dumb names, right? And so I, I'm always looking at names. I'm thinking, man, what were, they, what were they thinking? Thank God we don't live in the Old Testament again. <laughs> Amen? I like my name. Simple, one syllable, easy to remember, easy to write. Okay, so I'm looking at names, and I'm reading along. I don't even remember where it was, and I come across the name Nico. Nico. To many of you, that may not mean anything. That is the nephew. I believe it's his nephew, but they're trying to adopt Brother Shirley, Brother Tony Shirley, his wife's nephew. They're trying to get him, so he lives with them. Nico called. That's his name, Nico. And, uh, you know, he, I text him. I said, I think I'd heard him say one time, he said, Nico asked me, Daddy, why is my name not in the Bible? And so when I read that, I thought, man, that's a blessing. I don't know if Brother Shirley's ever seen that. So I texted him right then. I said, hey, I just found Nico in the Bible. He said, amen. That's what it was. He said, amen. He just asked me the other day, why is my name not in the Bible? Well, I find out. I still haven't listened to the message, but Lisa comes uh, a week or so later, and then Amanda texts me a couple weeks after that. She said, I was listening to a message. I don't know if they were listening to the same message. I'm assuming that. But Brother Shirley was preaching, and he said, they're, they're about to take Nico away. He may lose Nico in January. So just throw that out there as a prayer request. We love Brother Shirley around this place. Pray for him. They may lose him in January. But he said, you'll never know how prayer works. And, and I'm relaying the story from them. He was preaching. He said, I was praying, and I was begging God. I was crying, praying for Nico because we're about to lose him. He said, and this guy from Philly texts me and says, hey, I found Nico in the Bible. You know what that was? That was the Holy Spirit of God at a time when Brother Shirley needed something special just showing up in his prayer time. That was the Holy Spirit of God, him praying in North Carolina, me reading my Bible in Philadelphia, and God shows me something. I say a prayer for Brother Shirley and that boy, and then I text him, God worked that all out. That's not just coincidence, folks. That's Holy Ghost moving of God. That's in the Spirit praying. Sometimes the Spirit moves you as to what to pray for. I'm all for having a prayer list. I have a prayer list. I pray methodically through that prayer list. But there are times when I am praying that something will come across my mind and God says, pray for this person. That is in the Spirit praying. I'm not saying I'm there all the time. But you know what I mean. 
the Holy Spirit helps us. It's to be joined with the Holy Spirit. Now let me say this, and we won't take time to look. Galatians 5, verse number 16 through 25 lists the fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. If you're not walking in the Spirit, you will not be able to pray in the Spirit. Oh, you might get down and pray, but there won't be any Holy Ghost touch of God on that. If you're walking in the flesh, you say, how do I know if I'm walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit? Study those verses. If the, if the lusts of the flesh are in your life and they're listed there, then you're walking in the flesh. If the fruit of the spirit is in your life, you're in the spirit. It's pretty simple. That's a whole other message. So the five disciplines of prayer, number one, is the sp in the spirit praying. Number two is continual praying. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Continual praying. He says in verse 18, praying, what's the second word? Always. The word always means continually. I gave you the definition of that, or you gave me the definition of that earlier tonight. Continual means without end. First Thessalonians chapter 5, I believe it's verse 17, says pray without ceasing. That means without ending. You say, well, how do I pray all the time? You can't walk around with your eyes closed talking to God all the time, but you can walk around in your heart praying in an attitude of prayer all the time. They said of Billy Sunday that he was so in touch with God and his conversations with God never ended to the fact that or to the point that you could be carried on a conversation with him and you'd never know when he stopped talking to you and started talking to God until he was halfway through a conversation with God. You read his autobiography. People would be walking down the street with him talking about baseball. He was, a, he was a professional baseball player. He'd be talking about baseball, and he'd be right in the middle of a story and switch subjects, and the, the guy writing said, by the time I realized we weren't talking about baseball anymore, it was two or three minutes later, and then I realized he's been talking to God for the last two or three minutes. I didn't even catch the transition when he stopped talking to me and started talking to God. That's praying without ceasing. Being in a continual conversation with God. I was praying with my wife the other day, and she said, God, I don't even want to say amen. And I thought about this verse. I'm all for saying amen, it, you know, it's, it's, it, but sometimes we have the, the, it's vain repetition. We just say it because it's what we've always done. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, pray bless the food. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, pray bless the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Why say amen? Why be done? Lord, I pray that you give us a great night at service. Great night at church tonight. Bless the service. Bless the preaching. Bless the singing. Hey, brother Hayward, how are you, man? Good to see you. Did I end my prayer? No. I just kind of interrupted a little bit, said something to him. God, I pray you'd bless Hayward tonight. Give him exactly what you need. Hey, Jessica, how are you doing tonight? God, I pray you'd help her with her hair. There's no reason to end the conversation with God. That's what continual praying is. Praying always. Listen, you think the devil ever stops fighting you? Okay, I'm sorry, Jessica. You know, I, you know I was, I'm getting all kinds of dirty looks. Let me apologize to everybody else for offending Jessica. You think the devil ever stops fighting? You think the devil ever takes a break? Listen, you read Ephesians chapter 6. What are we talking about? Look at verse number 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. They don't take a day off. And so then he lists out the whole armor of God, and then at the end of it he says, Now, praying always. You can put on the armor of God, but the power comes from prayer. And if you have the armor on, but you don't pray, you're going to get it. You're in trouble. Praying always, continually, in every situation, without end, without omission, permanent praying. Listen, there should never be a time when I am not prepared or able to pray. How many of you... Someone's ever come to you and said, would you pray for me? And you said, absolutely, and in your mind you thought, it's going to take me forever to get right with God so I can pray for them. I know I'm not the only one. Brother Weedo says, keep short sin accounts. As soon as you sin, swallow your pride and get right with God. Because somebody may need you to intervene and get to God on their behalf immediately and if you got sin built up in your life you are letting them down there should never be a time in your life or my life when I am not able 
or prepared to pray. Acts chapter 1, they were in the upper room before the Holy Ghost came down and empowered them. And it says they were all praying in one accord continually. Didn't stop. Didn't end. Continual praying. Listen, prayer time doesn't have to stop just because your devotions are over at home. Prayer time doesn't just have to stop because we're done at church on Thursday night. You can pray going home. You can pray when you get home. You can pray when you get up in the middle of the night to go get those cookies. Or whatever you do. Hey, how many of you are get a midnight snack? Pray for me. When you get up and go to the refrigerator, come on. Think about me and pray for me. How much idle time do we have every day? Honestly. How much idle time do we have? Some of you ride the train, ride the, the, the buses to work. What do you do while you're sitting on that train? And that's time you could be praying. Really? How many red lights do we sit at in Philadelphia? Way too many. Pray for me about the red lights. Continual praying. Number three, Ephesians 6.18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Number three is varied praying. He says prayer and supplications. Listen, you gotta, that's where, where you've got to study your Bible. The word prayer there means to worship. It means to worship. How much of your prayer consists of worshiping God? Praising Him for who He is. Praising Him for what He is. Prayer uh, or praise and worship consists of thankfulness and thanksgiving. How much of your prayer time consists of giving thanks to God? That's what prayer in that verse means. Praying always with all prayer, worship, and then supplication. Supplication means petition or request. Now you be honest tonight, how much of your prayer is supplication? Versus worship. I told you this before. My wife made the statement to the girls. She said, we were praying for plane tickets one summer. She said, listen, we've asked God for, at that point, I think it had been weeks. We had been praying that God would supply the money for plane tickets to go see Grandma. And God supplied. She said, we ought to thank God at least as many times as we asked God. How often do you ask for what you need? When God answers, how many times do you thank Him? Listen, we're coming up on Thanksgiving. It's going around Facebook. It's going around social media. 31 days of Thanksgiving. Why has it only got to be November? Why not 365 days of Thanksgiving? Well, I can't think of that many things. God not been that good to you? Varied praying. This type of praying is born out of the previous type of praying continual praying. What kind of praying is there? What do you mean by varied praying? There's all kinds of prayer. There's prayer to resist temptation. There's prayer for wisdom. There's prayer for power. There's prayer for self-restraint. There's prayer for protection and growth and conviction for yourself and for others. There's prayer for, for your pastor. There's prayer for other people. There's all kinds of praying that can be done, but if we're not careful, we'll just kind of get zoned in. I got my prayer list, and usually when, we're not pay when I'm not paying attention, I start praying through my prayer list, and I can't catch myself often praying for me. Father, I pray that you'd help Monique today. And Lord, what a strong Christian she is. And she encourages me. And she's a blessing to me. And, and God, I pray that you'd just help me. And uh, thought I was praying for Monique. Lord, I pray for Hector today and his hot mess of a boss. And uh, you said that, not me. I pray that you'd help him today, and God, I pray that you'd help me to be a witness today to people around me. And if we're not careful, we get off our, we just, we mention his name and pray for me. And then I mention her name and I pray for me. And then I mention her name and I pray for Howard. <laughs> Let's not be selfish prayers. Let's not be, there's all kinds of praying, varied praying. When was the last time you spent some time praying and didn't ask God for anything? Listen, we've heard that statement in many ways a lot in this church, but how many of us have ever done it? We just sang the song, Draw Me Near. The third verse says, Oh, the pure delight of a single 
hour that before thy throne I spend. When was the last time you spent a whole hour continuously praying? I mean, one solid hour. Not pray for a few minutes, read your Bible, go get a cup of coffee, come back. Pray. I mean, one solid hour on your face talking to God. Varied praying. Listen, all of this takes discipline. In the Spirit praying, continual praying, varied praying. Number four, perseverant praying. Isn't that the same as continual praying? No, no, no. Continual is always having that attitude of prayer. Perseverant praying means persistent. It means the prayer that doesn't give up. Take your Bible and go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Big difference between continual and being in, always being in the attitude of prayer and perseverant praying or persistent praying. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Then it goes a little bit farther. Seek, and ye shall find. Then it goes a little bit farther. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. We won't take the time to look at the verse. But you can write it down and read it later. Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10 illustrates this verse. Ask, seek, and knock. He tells a story. Jesus tells a story about a guy. He says, he, it's in the middle of the night. He's in bed with his family. And a, a friend or, or a stranger, somebody comes and knocks on his door and says, hey, we need a place to stay. And in the middle of the night, he gets up and lets him in and realizes, I don't have any food. So he goes to his neighbor and says, hey, do I have some food? And the neighbor says, man, it's the middle of the night. Get away from me. I'm not giving you anything. Ask. He comes back to the same neighbor. He goes, hey, listen, man, listen, I need some help here. I've got some people that came to stay with me, and I don't have any food to give them. Will you help me? Man, get away from me. There's not anything. I'm not helping you today. It's the middle of the night. I'm in bed. My family's in bed. That's seeking. He went back again. Then it says this. Hey, open up. I need some bread. The guy gets adamant. He doesn't just get satisfied with the first no. I mean, that doesn't satisfy him at all. I ask. Uh -uh. I seek. No. Okay, I'm going to beat your door down. And you know what the end, of the, result, or the end result is? The guy says, okay, fine. I'm going to get up and give it to him, or none of us are going to sleep all night. Because he's just going to keep beating on the door and asking me for bread. So here, take it and be gone. That's the 21st century version. Go read the story later. See if I'm not lying. That's exactly what happened. Ask, seek, knock. How bad do you need what you think you need? Well, I prayed about it how many times? Once. For how long? I really, well, I really didn't pray. I just, you know, it's in my mind. Remember the message the preacher preached? We, we, we make the statement, I prayed about it, but we really only are thinking about it. I'm thinking about praying about it. Asking, seeking, and knocking. The word is importunity there in Luke chapter 11. You remember the first point, praying in the Spirit? Why would God impress you to pray for it if God didn't intend to answer your prayer? You see, we give up too easy. It's not that God is saying, I'm trying to be, I'm, I'm playing hard to get. God said, I'm trying to get you on my page. I'm trying to get you in partnership with me. I want you to be joined to me. I put you in that position. I'm giving you that problem because you don't talk to me any other time. So why would I answer it immediately? You say you need me, but if I answer right away, you'll ignore me. So I'm going to see how bad you really need me. Here's what men do. God, I need you. Now let me figure out how I can do this. If I, bought, if I rob Peter to pay Paul, and I, I kick the kids out, and I sell this, and I do this, I can get enough money to pay this. And so we do all that, and then we want to stand and go, look what God did. God didn't do that. You did it. God's standing over here going, why are you giving me the credit? You made that mess, and most of the time that's how it ends up. We step back and think, look what I did. I accomplished it. God did this, and the next day, a bomb drops on us, and we think, whoa, where did that come from? Now I'm in a real mess. God's standing back here going, you need me or not? You want me or not? Ask, seek, 
knock. Perseverant pray. The story is told of George Mueller. He lived in the 1800s, started a bunch of orphanages. He had two very close friends that in his younger years, and after he got saved, he began to pray for them. Fifty years he prayed for thou salvation. Fifty years he prayed for them. People ask him, why would you keep praying for them? It's been 50 years. And he said the statement I just made a few minutes ago, why would God impress upon my heart to pray for them if he didn't intend to answer the prayer? One of those men got saved right before he died. The other one got saved right after he died. You say, well, why does it take 50 years? Who cares how long it takes? God says, I want you to be perseverant. I want you to, we use the, sometimes we use the phrase pray through. Perseverant, praying. Don't give up. One more prayer could be the one that God answers, but we stop one too short. In the spirit praying, continual praying, varied praying, persevered praying, lastly, intercessory praying. Intercessory praying. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. We're done. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereto, thereunto with all, there's the word, perseverance and supplication. What's the last three words say? For all saints. The last type of praying is intercessory praying. Really, this is the height of of our prayer life. This praying has nothing to do with me. It's not about me. I won't take the time. I wrote the verses down here. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 4. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Philippians chapter 1, verse 4. I'll give them to you later if you want them. Six of the 13 epistles that the Apostle Paul wrote, he said in his opening statement, praying Always for you in my prayers. Making intercession for you continually in my prayers. Paul's prayer life, I can't find one time in any of Paul's writings other than the thorn in the flesh that Paul did much praying for himself. Most of the praying that you see Paul write about and talk about, he's praying for other people. How much of your time, your prayer time is spent on you versus anybody else? intercessory praying John chapter 17 is really the Lord's Prayer people often say what's the Lord's Prayer our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy no that's an example of how to pray a method to pray the real Lord's Prayer is in John chapter 17 and he doesn't pray for himself one time he prays for everybody he prays for all of us he prays for his disciples the whole chapter how much of your prayer is spent on you Versus everybody else. Intercessory praying. Listen, these are disciplines in prayer. This, the, this, these kinds of praying don't just happen overnight. They don't just happen by accident. These are things that you discipline yourself to do on a consistent, regular basis. So how much of this kind of prayer is in your life and in my life? Listen, folks, prayer is the most important thing you will do as a Christian. Hands down, without question, the most important thing you will ever do as a Christian. Not that you shouldn't be doing other things, but if you're doing other things and not praying, the other things you're doing are pointless. You have no power in those things if you're not praying. You have no power in your marriage if you're not praying. You have no power over temptation and sin if you're not praying. You have no power over, over anything if you're not praying. Prayer is where it's at. Prayer is what the devil will fight you the most on. How many of you have a hard time, honestly, how many of you have a hard time getting up and reading your Bible? How many of you have a hard time getting up and praying? I could read for an hour. Wouldn't bother me a bit. I get down to start praying. I heard Brother Baldwin say it this week. He said, you get down to start praying, and the phone rings, and your text messages start coming in, and emails start coming in, and the boss needs to get in, and the baby wakes up, and everybody's got this, and everybody, the kids are fighting, and, and 5.30 a.m., they're jackhammering the playground out here. Uh, it doesn't happen when you're reading. But you get down to start praying, all hell breaks loose. You know Why? Because 
Prayer is where the power's at. If he can keep you from praying, he can keep you powerless. Read all the Bible you want. Don't pray. Because prayer, what was the first statement I gave you? When you pray, God works. The devil doesn't want God to work. So more than anything, he is going to fight your prayer life. So fight back. Discipline yourself. Make a decision. We're going to pray. Let's have our heads bowed, eyes closed. We're going to take some time to pray. I went longer than I intended to.